Welcome back. 25 Korea ambassadors have been disengaged from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, having attained the retirement age of 60 years or served for 35 years. However, the Korea ambassadors are unhappy with the process of disengagement, saying the December 31st, 2019 notice to them was too sudden. Some have pleaded for an extension by two or three months to complete diplomatic formalities before leaving. The Minister of Foreign Affairs has refused, reminding them that a tenure extension was handed them by President Mahmoud Buhari in 2018. Spokesperson for the ministry, Mr. Ferdinand Moye, criticized the request for an extension as selfish, saying they should have been disengaged by now, as has been the practice with other ambassadors. The Air Force says its fighter jets have killed several Boko Haram terrorists and destroyed some structures in their Abulam camp in the Sambisa forest area of Borno State. Air Force spokesperson Air Commodore Ibikuni Daramola says the strike was ex executed to mark the commencement of Operation Rattlesnake 2, an air interdiction operation aimed at taking out some identified insurgent camps and logistics facilities. He asked that Abalam was selected for attack on day one of the operation based on credible intelligence reports. Time for sports news. Here's Illumide Macaulay. Hi, Illumide, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Marichi. Happy New Year to all our viewers. The Ministry of Youth and Sports Development says it's working towards ensuring the country has a good experience at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics in a statement celebrating the new year. The ministry assures that athletes will be exposed to the best training, competition, and good camping before the Games. The short-term plans of the ministry is focused on infrastructure, athletes' welfare, the grassroots and commitment to make sports a business. This year, the ministry hopes to monitor and ensure the completion of about 20 mini stadia in the country. The Nigeria Football Federation has described 2020 as a crucial year for football in the country. NFF President Amadou Penik told Channel Sports that the focus is to qualify for major events, particularly the 2022 FIFA World Cup in Qatar. A major objective before the NFF now is the qualifiers and the development of youth football. This year is a very critical year for Nigerian football. Nigeria cannot afford not to go to the World Cup. It will be suicidal because we are used to going to the World Cup. It's going to be very, very bad. So this distraction, this constant distraction, petitions, all these things, please, with all due respect, I'm appealing because they know that this is politics. This year we need total concentration because the format is not a tea party. The format has changed for the World Cup qualifiers. Now there are 40 teams going to the World Cup qualifiers. Of these 40 teams, they are going to have 4-4. Four, four. Only the winner qualifies into the last round mm. where they will not play head-to-head -head with another country. In the Nigeria Professional Football League, MFMFC failed to capitalize on their home advantage as they were held to a barren draw by Nasara United at the Agege Stadium in Lagos. The result lifts MFM to the ninth position on the table with 16 points, while Nasara move one place off the bottom. In the English Premier League, Leicester's impressive season has continued with a dominant win at Newcastle that keeps them second and inflicts a third straight defeat on Steve Bruce's side. A brilliant goal from Danny Ings gave Southampton a draw but deserved win over Jose Moreno's Tottenham Hotspur. Goals from Gerard de la Faux and Abdoulaye de Coure gave Watford a 2-1 win over Wolves. Gabriel Jesus scored twice as Manchester City survived a nervy finish to hold off Everton and end Carlo Ancelotti's unbeaten start as Tuffy's manager. David Moyes, West Ham return, got off to the best possible start as two Mark Noble goals helped his side to an emphatic victory over Bournemouth. To tennis, Venus Williams has pulled out of the upcoming Brisbane International after suffering a setback in training. Venus was set to join world number one Ash Barty, Carolina Liskova, and Naomi Osaka in a strong field at the Queensland Tennis Center from January 6th to the 12th. Organizers said they would announce a wild card to take her place in the draw today. 
And finally, Robert Kubica has joined Alfa Romeo as their 2020 reserve driver, the role the Polish driver carried 14 years ago when he made his Formula One debut with the Swiss-based team then known as BMW Sabre. Kubica's big break came in 2006 when he became Poland's first Formula One racer, replacing Canada's 1997 world champion Jacques Villeneuve at BMW Sabre and going on to win with them at the 2008 Canadian Grand Prix. Kubica suffered a near-fatal rally accident in 2011 that partially severed his right arm. Alfa Romeo's race drivers this year are Finland's 2007 world champion Kimi Raikkonen and Italian Antonio Giovinazzi. That's it on Sports News. I'm Archie, back to you. And the main news again, it was joy and excitement today as dazzling fireworks lighted up the skyline of major cities around the world as citizens ushered in 2020 and a new decade with prayers, concerts and political addresses. Also today, clerics challenged political leaders on the pathway to peace and development in the country as they admonished the congregants on how to conduct themselves in the new year. And the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, today called for urgent action to tackle the many challenges facing the global community in the new year. That's it on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Have a great year ahead.